hearing loss can buy these hearing aids without a prescription, exam, or even fitting, which will lower average cost by as much as $3,000. That's thousands of dollars going back into the pockets of Americans and providing a little more breathing room in their family budgets as well. Finally, President Biden looks forward to welcoming President Herzog of Israel to the White House on October 26, a visit that underscores the enduring partnership and friendship between the United States and Israel. They will consult on key issues, including regional and global challenges of mutual concern, opportunities to deepen Israel's regional integration, and ways to advance equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and security for both Israelis and Palestinians. President Herzog will be in Washington October 25th and 26th for meetings with a range of interagency officials. With that, Darlene, you want to kick us off? Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to start by asking, is the president aware of the comments that Donald Trump made yesterday about American Jews uh, basically saying that they're ungrateful and they better get their act together, appreciate what they have before it's too late? Given that the White House weighed in pretty uh, forcefully last week to the racist comments by the Los Angeles City Council members, would the White House um, denounce uh, these anti-Semitic comments by the former president as well? So Donald Trump's comments were anti-Semitic, as you all know, and insulting, both to Jews and to our Israeli allies. But let's be clear, for years, for years now, Donald Trump has aligned with extremists and anti-Semitic figures. And it should be, it should be called out, to your point, Darlene, just like we called out our Democratic uh, friends and colleagues last week. And we will condemn and call this out as well. So we need to root out anti-Semitism everywhere. It rears its ugly head. We need to call this out. With respect to Israel, our relationship is ironclad, and it's rooted in shared values and interests. Donald Trump clearly doesn't understand that either. Okay. Uh, just to follow up on that, it was announced earlier today that the rapper formerly known as Kanye West wants to buy the cons conservative social media platform Parler. Um, and this comes after he was kicked off of Twitter and Instagram last week for his own set of anti-Semitic comments. Is the White House or the President concerned that uh, should this sale go ahead and that Ye be allowed to buy this platform, that it would give him a, another venue for anti-Semitic comments, hateful comments, with no, you know, no gatekeeper, no one to say that's wrong or anything like that? So as you know, when it comes to these types of purchases uh, or agreements, I can't speak to that. Uh, so that's not something, the actual, you know, uh, agreement or inter interaction, I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is hateful rhetoric. What I can speak to uh, is insulting rhetoric. When I can't, what I can't speak, can speak to is anti-Semitism, which is hateful, it is dangerous, uh, and uh, we are going to continue to condemn that type of language because at the end of the day, it is disgusting. And it is, there is no room, absolutely no room, no place in our political discourse to be having that type of really vile uh, conversation or comments being made. President Biden hasn't attended any rallies or events in public in support of candidates in recent weeks. With the midterms just three weeks away, will we begin to see him do that more? What was what was schedule look like? Wait, can you wait? Can you say your first part? He hasn't attended any rallies or public-facing events with candidates in recent weeks. What will his schedule look like in the coming weeks as the midterms get closer? Um, so I have to be careful because I can't. We do. Uh, we do respect the Hatch Act and uh, and our strict limits from here, so I want to be very, very clear, careful. Uh, but I would point you to this, the president's most recent uh, trip to out west. So it's kind of a bizarre uh, question to ask because he was very uh, visible last this weekend and last week. Uh, he was out there, and again, I cannot speak uh, to specific 
you know, elections or campaigns or actions that he's he's taken. But all I will do is point you to his West Coast trip most recently. As far as um, upcoming trips, we've announced that he's going to go to Pennsylvania. We've announced that he's going to go to Florida. He was just in Colorado, Oregon, and California. Uh, and uh, don't don't have more beyond uh, the next two trips uh, that I have just laid out. Uh, and uh, he's going to be out there with uh, congressional Democrats and elected uh, Democrats to continue to talk about how uh, uh, congressional Democrats and the president has delivered for the American people when it comes to lowering cost, uh, when it comes to making sure that we're creating jobs right here in America, uh, when it comes to what we just announced today with hearing aids. Uh, so he is he is proud uh, of the work that we have done here, and he's going to continue to talk and make sure to talk about it uh, in states uh, and make sure that the American people hear directly from him. Right, a, lot, a lot of the places that you mentioned um, were private fundraisers or official events. Um, will we be seeing him uh, appear alongside candidates in public? Is that intentional to not have him uh, do stumping with these candidates and supporting his party? Again, I'm going to be very careful about what I say uh, about ongoing elections. I am restricted here, but I will point you uh, to uh, Portland, Oregon. I will point you to L.A., uh, California, uh, where he was uh, out there with um, uh, with his uh, with fellow Democrats, uh, talking about uh, how we have delivered in the past 19, 20 months. Are we see him in public with the candidate, the trips, upcoming trips that you've mentioned with with uh, John Fetterman and Charlie Crist when he was in Florida. Um, will cameras be allowed into his events? Will we see him alongside these? I'm not going to go into the details of what these events are going to look like, uh, but we were very clear when we announced Pennsylvania this week that he is going to be uh, with Lieutenant Governor uh, Fetterman. Thanks, Pete. Does the White House have a reaction to Russia's latest drone strikes against Kyiv? Yeah, so we have talked about Russia's uh, escalation and have been uh, very clear about what uh, what is uh, what is going to continue to happen. Uh, the most recent escalation, uh, the United States strongly condemns uh, Russia's missile strikes today, uh, which continue to demonstrate Putin's brutality. Uh, as you know, President Biden and the G7 leaders met with President Zelensky last week, and President Biden also spoke with President Zelensky one-on-one -on -one the day before uh, that G7 uh, conversation. We are in daily touch with the Ukrainians across the administration, from the National Security Advisor to the Department of Defense and the Department of State. On Friday, we announced an additional $725 million in security package for Ukraine to provide critical needs for its for its to defend itself, continue to defend itself and bravely. Uh, and uh, last week, Secretary of, Defense, uh, of De Secretary of Defense Austin brought together 50 defense ministers to announce more security support for Ukraine, including air defense uh, capabilities. We will continue, We will, as we have said over the past several months, to stand with the people of Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, we, are going to, we are going to continue to work with our allies and partners. Uh, we will continue to impose costs on Russia, hold them accountable and uh, for its war crimes, as we've talked about, you've heard directly from the president uh, on the war crimes piece and its atrocities, and providing Ukraine with security, economic, and humanitarian assistance. The uh, president said on Saturday that he thought uh, Prime Minister Truss's initial economic plan was a mistake. Uh, her new finance minister has announced a pretty complete U-turn um, on those plans. Does the White House welcome that? So, like the president said, you were there. Uh, you you may have asked him the question of not a hundred. <laughs> Uh, so, like the president said this past Saturday, uh, the question that uh, Jeff may or may not have asked uh, is up to the UK to make these judgments. Uh, it is really up to them uh, to decide what is right uh, for their, um, you know, for their own constituents, right, for their country. Uh, the UK is a close ally, as you've heard us say many times, and we work with them on a range of issues, including strengthening uh, the global economy. Our focus is on the long term, as we have said many times, which is growth and investment investment and increased manufacturing, as you've seen the work that we have done here in Congress and the President with the CHIPS Act, making sure that we are making uh, uh, making things right here in America. And not only that, we have created about 700,000 manufacturing jobs right here uh, in America in the past 19, 20 months. So, uh, and also the fiscal discipline that is leading to, to more jobs, as I just laid out, and rising incomes and raise, rising incomes as we have focused on, and we'll make our economy 
economy stronger and more resilient, as we have seen, because of the work, because of the work uh, that this president has done when it comes to his economic plan. Okay. Just um, on the back to the drone uh, attacks, does the this administration believe that we are entering a new phase of the, the war in Ukraine? So I'm, I'm not going to go into any analysis uh, about where we are in this war. Um, we have been very clear about how we saw, how, how we've been seeing uh, Russia's, uh, Russia's escalation uh, over the past several weeks. And so, uh, you know, what we will do is to continue to support uh, the people of Ukraine. What we will do is to make sure that uh, they have what they need to continue their brave, uh, the way that they are fighting bravely uh, on the ground. We just announced, as I just mentioned, $725 million of new uh, assistance just this past Friday. We are in regular touch uh, with Ukrainians uh, the, in the administration, the government, uh, as we, as I mentioned, National Security Advisor and others uh, in, in the administration are, are continuing to talk, uh, have close conversations about their needs. And so that's going to continue. Uh, we will be in this for as long as it takes. And we've been very clear about this as well. This war can end today. This is a war that can end right now today if, uh, if, if Vladimir Putin wants it to. This is his war. He started this war. Two uh, quick political questions. Um, as the president uh, prepares to appear with John Fetterman later this week uh, in Pennsylvania, um, there's obviously, as you know, been a lively debate over Fetterman's health following his stroke. Do you know if the president uh, believes there's any sort of reason for concern on that point specifically? So uh, again, because it's connected to the uh, to his to his election, um, I want to be really careful. The Hatch Act is something that we do respect uh, and adhere to here. But speaking only about the president's uh, um, personal conversation with Lieutenant Governor Fetterman, uh, the president has found him to be an impressive individual and uh, who is just as capable as all, who has been who's just as capable as always, and who is who's carrying out his office. He's currently the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania, as we know, and he's doing that with great ability and heartfelt concern for the people of the Commonwealth. So yes, the President feels that he is he is very much capable of doing the job. Sorry, you said that was based on a recent conversation of the two of them? Well, they've had, they've met many times, as you know. Most recently, I, th I believe on Labor Day may have been the last time that they've seen each other in person. Uh, and they're going to see each other again, as you know, this Thursday. But the President and uh, Lieutenant Governor Federer have had uh, many interactions over the past several months. And then just my second political question. Um, the end of last week, the president said that his reaction to the Herschel Walker controversy in Georgia was negative. Wondered if you wanted to elaborate on that? No, I'm going to just let the president's words stand. I'm not going to uh, elaborate on that from here. Hey, Green, thanks. I have a question about hearing aids, but first I wanted to take a stab at the question from earlier. Um, the president has called this the most significant election, or one of the most significant elections, uh, with abortion rights, voting rights being on the ballot, and a lot of the gains you touted from the from the podium. Um, and you know he's spending this weekend at his vacation home in in Rehoboth, according to the schedule you guys released. I wonder if you can talk about the calculus there, 16 days before the election, especially during a year when you guys have said Biden would be getting out into the country more, counting the gains that you guys have made. So last week we spent four days of, in the country, right? We left on Wednesday, came back Saturday night. To be more specific, 2 a.m. on Sunday. Some of us walked into our house at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Um, and the week before that, he spent four days uh, out into the country. Uh, some of that was, yes, for the hurricane in Puerto Rico uh, and uh, going to see the recovery there. Uh, uh, another day was in Florida to talk to the American people uh, who were uh, Floridians who were in um, who were most affected by the hurricane there. Uh, so he's been around. He just went to Colorado. He just went to California. He just went to Portland. We're going to go to Pennsylvania. We're going to go to Florida. And uh, we'll have more to share. Um, the president takes this very seriously. Again, I want to be very careful. There is the Hatch Act. I am restricted on what I can say from the podium and from here. Uh, but the president takes what he has done um, in this time during his presidency, is his tenure, his about 20 months tenure, very seriously, and uh, wants to talk about what he has done, what Demo congressional Democrats have done to deliver for the American people. Uh, you mentioned the hearing aids, as I just 
uh, uh, talked about just moments ago. Uh, so yes, there is a lot at stake when you think about the national ban uh, on abortion that, uh, that Republicans, uh, extreme Republicans want to do, taking away the rights of women, uh, taking away a decision that is very difficult for women to make. Uh, when you think about what Republicans want to do with repealing the Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to lower cost or take away cost uh, of what we were talking about with lowering costs on health care, lowering costs uh, from on, for, because of Mer Medicare, uh, being able to negotiate when it comes to fighting special interests, they want to take that away. Uh, so the president is going to continue to talk about that. Uh, again, we were just out west for four days. Uh, and so we're going to continue uh, to go out there, and the president's going to continue to talk directly to the American people. Okay. Uh, I just one more about the hearing. I, I did have one. It wasn't just a segue. But okay. I, I, do you have a sense of when the cost savings will begin to accrue? Obviously, that's not instantaneously. But you talked about prices lowering. Is there a sense of like when that happens and over what time frame? So I don't have a timeline for you right now. I'm certainly I can talk to our team to get a specific timeline. But what is important about this is that the president took action. He did an executive order af asking FDA to find ways to lower cost uh, for 30 million Americans uh, who do uh, who do benefit from hearing aid. That's 30 million Americans. That's going to save them thousands of dollars. And so this is an action, a deliberate action that the president took. And now we are going to see the benefits of that. As I can get back to you on exactly how uh, quickly that will occur. Uh, but again, this is a huge deal, a big deal. When we talk about giving Americans a little breathing room, when we talk about taking inflation very seriously as one of our number one economic uh, priorities, this is it. This is an example. Go ahead. Thanks, Green. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act allocates about $80 billion to the IRS, but the IRS is uh, not going to have a commissioner as of next month when Commissioner Redding, uh, uh, when his term expires. Can you talk about what, what's behind the delay for renominating, for nominating a replacement, and is that going to slow down the overhaul of the agency? It's not going to slow down the overhaul of the agency. We take this very seriously. Don't have anything to preview for you at this time on a, any personnel announcement. When we do, we'll be happy to share that. Uh, following up on the Western Swing last week, the president visited Colorado, California, Oregon. At one point, a couple of uh, representatives from Nevada joined him in California. Why didn't the president visit Nevada or Arizona on that trip? And does he have any plans to visit those two states in the next three weeks? Again, I just want to be careful. I know you didn't ask it in the frame of the midterms. I know that. I'm just being very careful here. I know. Just being very careful, Hatch Act. We respect that here. Um, look. I, you know, the president is going to um, get out there, as we have said multiple times, uh, to make sure that he's talking directly to the American people uh, about how we are delivering uh, for delivering on our promises, uh, delivering on how we're really taking inflation seriously, delivering on making sure that we're creating those jobs uh, that the American people really need at this time. And so he's been on the road nonstop. And he will uh, continue to be on the road nonstop. Uh, and, uh, you know, where he is needed, he will go. And uh, if we have more to add to his travel, we, sure, we certainly will. As you know, he's going to Pennsylvania on Thursday. And November 1st, he's going to be going to Florida. But why not Nevada and Arizona during I, the I just said, right? if we have more to share, we certainly will. Uh, don't have anything else to add to what I just laid out. And tomorrow, he's expected to speak about abortion rights at an event in Washington, D.C. Why now is he speaking about that particular issue? What is the goal of that event tomorrow? So I'll give you a little bit of preview, but I would um, I would happily argue that the president has talked about that particular issue, uh, Roe and uh, protecting women's rights, uh, protecting uh, the 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 right for women to decide uh, what uh, does to make really important decision, difficult decision on her body. Uh, or her, and her health care uh, from the beginning and even before the Dobbs decision was made. But I'll say this, um, again, want to be careful. I can't speak from here on tomorrow's event beyond what we put out, put into guidance. But broadly speaking, uh, I'm happy to take the chance to talk about this uh, and, uh, and what uh, the president will be uh, leaning into. So 
Again, the assault on women's access to reproductive health care by Republicans official is an assault. And the President's going to speak about that, uh, as he has been for the past several months. He just talked about when he was out uh, west, he talked about the national bans that we're seeing from extreme Republicans, uh, whether it be Lindsey Graham's proposed uh, national ban, uh, abortion ban, or the effort in Arizona to enforce a law on the books from 1864, before women, women even had the right to vote. And you've heard me talk about this before, right here at the podium. Republican officials are dead set on moving America backwards and stripping women of their rights. That is what we have been seeing uh, since the Dobbs decision in June. And their obsession with reg regulating women's bodies is not just disturbing, it's also very dangerous. So reporting from USA Today, your own, uh, your own publication, late last week indicated Walgreens and CVS can deny women medication now, even for unrelated medical conditions like arthritis. And this isn't happening in a vacuum. Uh, this is happening very clearly, very abruptly. Uh, it's the product of, of overreach by Republican officials to regulate, again, women and their own health care, their own private decisions that they should be making on their own. It's backwards, again, it's dangerous, and it's severe in stark contrast to the president and the commitment that he has to leave these decisions between a woman and her doctor. And that's what you're going to hear from him uh, tomorrow. Thank you so much. Uh, Pakistan on Saturday summoned the U.S. ambassador for an explanation after the president described Pakistan as the most dangerous world place in the world. Uh, does the White House have a reaction to that? And also, if Pakistan is the most dangerous place, then why provide an assistance with the F-16? So I already spoke to this uh, just the other day. I don't have much to add. I spoke to this on Friday when we were headed to uh, to Portland. Uh, the president, this is something the president has said before, um, and I just am not going to add more uh, to what I just laid out uh, just a couple of days ago. Okay. Good to see you. Um, Good to see you. Oh, welcome back. It's been a while. You've been out on the road doing things. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, questions of foreign and domestic politics. Uh, first, the president's comments on the British Prime Minister are intriguing in part because he doesn't often comment on the specifics of another world leader's policies. Is there any regret from him about saying that this uh, proposed tax cuts uh, are a mistake? No. And when he referred to, who, who else was he referring to when he said he wasn't the only one who thought Truss's policies were a mistake? I don't have any uh, any other countries or names to, uh, to lay out or name for you at this time. I was just curious if he was talking to world leaders or if there was somebody in his own team who said these are a mistake. Yeah, I, I just don't have anything else to add to that. On the political questions you've gotten, um, and I, you're doing a great job of, of keeping the lawyers back there happy by not <laughs> Thank talking you. about the hatchet. <laughs> yes. But it's important. <laughs> let's see what he's been in the last month. He's okay. giving a speech tomorrow in D.C. He's given fundraisers in New Jersey, New York. He campaigned with Democratic governor candidates in Massachusetts and Maryland, and then he was in California, Oregon, and Colorado next week. Yes, he has plans to be in Pennsylvania and Florida, but behind closed doors with two of the Democratic candidates. There's a White House Office of Political Affairs. Have they been getting phone calls from candidates in some of those other states, Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, to say, we'd love to have the president come? Look, I don't have any calls to read out. We don't have any calls or personal conversations to read out. Look, the way we see it, and the, and the president has been traveling nonstop. He did a great job laying out the places that he's been to. Uh, and he's going to continue uh, to be on the road nonstop. That is not going to, that is not going to stop. Uh, as, you, as you noted, we announced that we're going to Pennsylvania and Florida. Look, he's going to go where he is needed the most. Uh, and uh, at, at this time, uh, we're not, we don't have just any additional, uh, we just don't have any additional travel to, to lay out for you. Again, I'm trying to be very careful here on what I can say. I am restricted at the podium because of the Hatch Act. Uh, but again, he has been traveling nonstop. Uh, uh, you just laid out where he has gone and where he's going to, to be in the next couple of days, and the president is looking forward to it. He is looking forward uh, to being out there. You all saw him uh, just the past couple of days talking directly to the American people, having conversations, laying out his thoughts, uh, and you'll continue to see that. One other on China. Does he have any comment on President Xi's speech to the party Congress on Sunday and his anticipated third term? So I uh, don't want to comment from here on any uh, internal political process uh, of other countries. I want to be really careful. I'm not going to comment from here. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it there. Thank you, Corrine.
Uh, following up on something you said earlier, if President Biden's top domestic priority is inflation, why doesn't he have more to show for it? So the president understands, and we've talked about this many times, um, that uh, inflation um, is an issue, high, high cost. Cost is an issue for the American people. And so he's been very clear about making that his number one economic priority. And he has done the work. And he's done the work with congressional Democrats. When you think about the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which is uh, going to lower the cost uh, for our seniors, millions and millions of seniors across the country, when you think about that $2,000 uh, cap on their own uh, Medicare prescription, uh, when you think about the thousands of dollars that our seniors pay a month, now that's going to be $2,000 a year. That is the work that congressional Democrats and, Republic and, and, and uh, congressional Democrats and the president has done. Republicans did not vote for that at all. And what Republicans want to do is that they want to repeal that very historic piece of legislation that is also going to lower energy costs, that is also going to help fight uh, climate change. They want to get rid of it. So there is a contrast that we are going to make, which is how Republicans are actually going to make things worse. And Democrats want to do the opposite and make things a little easier. I just talked about the hearing aids, which is going to help 30 million uh, 30 million Americans across the country. But who exactly thinks the president is doing a good job on inflation? Because we've got a new poll that finds he receives his lowest job ratings on inflation, net negative 38 points. We understand that there are challenges that are uh, in front of us here in this country. That is why the president has taken action to lower costs. Think about gas prices. You think about health care uh, healthcare, uh, premiums. You think about Medicare, again, beating special interests so that we can lower costs, so Medicare can actually be able to lower costs for senior citizens. When you think about all of these steps that he has taken to make sure that that is happening, Republicans, Republicans in Congress refuse, they refuse to be partners with us on this. They refuse to help us. You think about the American Rescue Plan that has helped create an economy that is indeed resilient, and that created that, jobs. They the refuse American to help. Have the president's economic advisors told him that the general consensus now is that the American Rescue Plan has contributed to inflation? Look, Secretary um, Yellen, who is incredibly well respected, as you know, in the uh, economic space, has spoken to this. So I will leave her words uh, speak to that to the to, to the statement that you just made. Here's the thing: what the president has done, the issues that he has worked on. When you think about Medicare, we think about health care, you think about energy costs, you think about Inflation Reduction Act, uh, you think about the Chips Act. They are popular. They are popular with the American people. They understand. The American people understand what these pieces of legislation that that we have worked so hard to get across the line that are now law is going to change, change the lives of American people. Now, is there work, is there work, work to be done? There's always more work to be done, but we are making, we are taking the steps to do that. Again, congressional Republicans, they are doing nothing, absolutely nothing. They want to repeal, they want to take away the advances that we have made. Go ahead, Kelly. When the president uh, either hears or is briefed about um, Senator Warnock in, in Georgia not saying uh, that he would support uh, or answering the question about would he support the president in 2024, does he view that as disloyal to the president personally or to the administration, or does he view it as strategic in a race? Um, <coughs> Georgia's estate, President Biden won in 2020, and yet as a candidate, the sitting senator would not engage on that question in a, in a debate format. So how does the president view something like that? So, again, just to be very mindful of no, the Hatch I Act, stuff. I don't... The president's feelings oh, no, this. I hear the president's feelings. Here's what the president understands and he knows, uh, is that he is the leader of the party. Uh, and he is not only that, but he is the President of the United States, and it is important to him to make sure that he addresses and deals with the most important issues to the American people. That is his focus. He's not focused on 2024, and he's spoken to that, and I've spoken to that, and he said he intends to run. We're going to leave that there. We're not going to speak to it any further. But he has been very clear about how important he sees his job uh, to make sure that 
we we understand that we meet people where they are when it when we talk about inflation. That's why he's made this the inflation the number one uh, economic uh, number one priority for and when it comes to his economic policy. That's why we have the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, right, to really deal with what Americans care about, to make sure that we're dealing with infrastructure, dealing with supply chain, creating jobs. When you think about the American Rescue Plan, right, to make sure we put money in people's pockets, to make sure that we open schools, got shots and arms. Those are the things that the president understood that was before him that he needed to address. And so that's his focus. That's how he's thinking about things. As you're asking me how he's feeling, how he sees things, he sees this opportunity as being president of the United States, as, as being the person who is able to help create legislation, get things passed. From no. fellow Democrats? Look, he sees the importance of the job that he has in front of him. Right, and um, which is delivering for the American people. You heard him say that over and over again the last couple of days, and you you will continue uh, to hear him say that over the next uh, several weeks. Quickly on student loans, the beta period for applications has begun. Do you have a sense of how long that testing process will be, or what people who are interested in applying should know about uh, this early stage? So uh, we'll have more to, to say on that soon, uh, but we've seen an, an overwhelmingly positive uh, response as well as a strong website performance uh, since we, we began testing the site this past Friday night. So it's been very positive. Just a few things applicants over the weekend have said about this I want to just lay out so folks can hear. Uh, one said it was the easiest application they've ever filled out. Uh, took maybe 60 seconds, that's a quote. Uh, another said, and I quote, I just filled out the student loan forgiveness form in about one minute on my phone in my pajamas. It is possible that the government actually made a form that's easy and straightforward, and quote. Another quote, it is the simplest government form I've ever filled out. Uh, so the better, the, the, the beta testing period remains open, and the Department of Edu Education's technical team will continue to monitor uh, the site's performance in real time. And uh, any borrower who, who submits an application for debt relief during the, uh, th this period will have it processed when the site officially launches later this month. Borrowers won't need to, to reapply at all. Uh, but again, we'll have more to share. I don't have anything at this time, but we'll have more to share. Go ahead. Thanks, Just to follow up on that, do you have an estimate of how many people applied over the last couple of days? We'll have more to share on that. We don't have a number at this time. And, and the president said last week the gas prices are still too high, and he said he'd have more to say on the issue this week. Yes. Um, can you give us a sense of what we should expect from the president on gas prices? And is he, does he have new policies in mind, or is it more of just like a rhetorical uh, He'll definitely have more to say. As you know, we don't want to get ahead of, I don't want to get ahead of the president. And once we have something to share, uh, we will. I know we're kind of limited on time, so I'm going to go really, really fast. Go ahead, Stephen. Thanks, Kareem. Uh, you may have gotten into this in response to, to Peter's question, but I want to approach it just somewhat differently. CBS News poll that was out yesterday indicated that two-thirds <coughs> of voters believe that the administration is not doing all it can and could be doing more to curb inflation. What does the White House think? Does the White House think it's it's doing all it can to curb What we understand is, uh, you know, we understand that the American people are going through a difficult time. And we have said that. You've heard the president say that. And we understand how uh, it is tough. It is a tough time for them. That's why we're doing stuff like the hearing aid. 30 million people saving $3,000, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. And that's because of the action that the president took by signing this executive order, as you all know, a couple of, a couple of months ago. That's why he's worked so hard to get those gas prices down by more than a dollar a gallon from the highest, the highest points that we have seen just a couple of months ago. And he'll continue to work on that. I was just asked by your colleague uh, about what we're going to announce. You'll hear directly from the president. That's why the Inflation Reduction Act is so critical and key, because it's going to lower energy costs and it's going to lower uh, health care costs. We get it. We get it. I know you're asking me about a specific, uh, a specific poll, a specific number from your own uh, um, uh, publication, uh, uh, and we get it. We understand. But we're going to continue to do the work. Uh, it's not going to stop us. Uh, and you have seen the results. You have seen the results from this administration. I'm going to just keep moving because we don't have a lot of time. Okay. The president has talked about there being consequences for Saudi Arabia after the OPEC production cut. I'm wondering if you can give us any update on that, whether that would be something that would come soon, 
and what it might include. Senator Coons has said that he thinks the most likely action, or one of the most likely actions, is the halting of future arms sales, for instance. Would the administration support that? What's, what's the next shoe to drop? So, so I'm not going to get ahead of, of the president. Um, as, as we have said, you've heard from the national, our national security advisor, Jake Sullivan. Just yesterday, he was on one of the Sunday shows. Uh, options include changes uh, to our approach to security assistance, to your question, uh, to Saudi Arabia. Uh, the president has said since taking office that the United States needs a different approach, a different sort of relationship uh, with Saudi Arabia. So that is in, in, in line of what he has been saying for some time. And remember, when we came into office, we put a freeze on all offensive arms sales to Saudi Arabia just last year. So there's nothing imminently moving right now in Congress uh, regarding this. So there is time for the president to have uh, those consultations, those conversations, uh, to make those decisions. He wants to be uh, he wants to be methodical and strategic uh, about these uh, these conversations. So when we have something to share, we we will. Don't want to get ahead of him. He wants to move either after Congress or jointly. Congress as opposed to unilaterally. He definitely wants to have a, a conversation with Congress. This is something that Jake Sullivan said himself. When it comes to this re this relationship with Saudi Arabia, it was done in a bipartisan way. If you look at the last several decades, and we want to be able to do that uh, as well as we move forward with re realigning, readjusting our relationship with Saudi Arabia. Very quickly, Elon, Elon Musk has been weighing in a lot on the Russia-Ukraine issue recently. Uh, over the weekend, saying that uh, Russia views Crimea uh, like the U.S. views Hawaii, uh, and if Russia faces destruction, nuclear war will be imminent. Uh, Fiona Hill told Politico today that it's very clear that Musk is transmitting a message for Putin. I'm wondering whether the administration has any comment on what Musk has been saying about the Russia-Ukraine war, and in particular whether it's relayed anything to its partners and allies about whether Musk is reflecting an American view or not. So I'll say this, and the president has been very clear. We have been very clear about this, uh, and he believes decisions about negoti negotiations or decisions about Ukraine are decisions for Ukraine to make. And uh, nothing about U Ukraine without Ukraine. Uh, and uh, I will leave it there. We've been very, very clear, clear on that. Our allies and partners have been very, very clear on that. And uh, I won't say more from here. Well, I, I won't say more from here. I've been very clear about what we believe. Uh, and this is uh, for Ukraine to decide. Uh, Thank you, Karine. Um, my colleague is reporting today that five current administration officials who work with the CBP commissioner um, have described him as unengaged in his job um, and seen him fall asleep during multiple meetings. Does the White House have a comment to that? Uh, you're talking about Commissioner Magnus? Yes. So, um, look, under Secretary Mayorkas's leadership, uh, we're, we're securing the border, uh, taking thousands of smugglers off the streets, installing new technologies to catch more drugs and traffickers, and making historic investments in, in the Department of, of uh, Homeland Security. That's what we have seen. That's what we have done uh, in the past 20 months. We'll continue to focus our efforts on rebuilding the immigration system that the prior administration just gutted, uh, decimated. And uh, Commissioner Magnus plays a key role on all of this. That's how we uh, view his role. So you talked about reviewing the Saudi Arabian relationship because uh, their oil production cut sides them with Russia. Is the same review going to happen of China, who has been buying 50 percent more oil from Russia, as well as propping up the Russian economy? I, I don't have anything to, to lay out with you on, on that specific question. More than on inflation, on inflation um, can you give us a timeline? You've laid out eloquently what the president's been doing. Is there a timeline for when Americans can start feeling some economic pain relief? So in regards to the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, early next year, they will see uh, some of the, um, uh, some of the uh, uh, pieces of that. When you th think about an energy cost, when you think about um, uh, uh, the uh, Medicare kind of benefits from that. So we'll see uh, some movement on that early next year. But when we talk about inflation, gas prices, that's been something that th the American people uh, have seen for the past several months, several weeks, and has, as cost has been coming down. Uh, and the hearing aids uh, that I just laid out, that's something that uh, once I have a clearer timeline we'll, that Americans are going to see that I'll share with you uh, on all of that. But look, that we're going to continue. Now. What about 18 months ago when the president took office, inflation and gas prices started rising? Well, 18 months ago, uh, the president signed the American Rescue, Rescue Plan more than uh, about 
back in April uh, of uh, 2021, and that uh, helped the American people. That helped start, uh, uh, reopen small businesses, that helped uh, reopen schools. That was something that was so critical to meet the moment that the American people were going through. That helped put shots in arms. That matters. That was part of the president's economy plan, right? That was part of his policy that helped us gain these jobs back. And you're, you're, you're uh, with, uh, you, you follow economy, you're always asking me economy questions. And it, we created more than 10 million jobs. That's because of what the president was able to do. So we met that moment. So you're asking me about 18 months ago. That's what was going on 18 months ago. Thousands of people were dying a day because of COVID when the president walked in. The American Rescue Plan, which is only, again, only congressional Democrats passed, only congressional Democrats passed, did it on their own and was able to, to make sure that we got the country back on its feet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions about the new program for Venezuelan migrants. Mm -hmm. um, when can Venezuela, Venezuelans start uh, submitting their applications? When will that application process start? If you have any details. And also the administration mentioned last week that there was going to be some kind of security assistance for regional partners. Do you have any details on that? Thank you. So your, two, your first question uh, first, uh, supporters will be able to apply in the upcoming days. Information on how to apply will be found on the DH, DHS website, so I would refer folks there to the website. On the security assistance that was announced, as you just mentioned, last week, uh, again, I would refer you to DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, and also the Government of Mexico as well uh, their, uh, for their announcement that they made uh, for information on the coordinated uh, response there. Um, Madam, I'll take, take I'll take one, one last question. question. I'll I'll take one a question on Ethiopia. Thank, Thank you so much. I just have some quick questions on Iran. First of all, uh, is the administration mulling sanctions over the use of Iranian-made drones in Ukraine, and do you believe it's a violation of UN Resolution 2231? So, uh, just very quickly. Um, I can't speak to these specific reports, uh, but as you know, we have been warning since July. The National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, was here uh, at this very podium when he warned about this back in July, uh, that Iran was planning to sell UAVs uh, to Russia for use against Ukraine. Uh, we also exposed publicly that Russia has received drones from Iran, uh, that this was part of Russia's plan uh, to import hundreds of Iranian UAVs uh, of very various types, and that Russian operators continue to receive training uh, in, in Iran on how to use these very systems. So there is extensive proof of their, of their use by Russia against both military and civilian targets there. Uh, you'll, you'll also, you've all have seen as well the reports this morning of what appear to be an Iranian drone striking downtown Kiev. Yet Iran continues to lie about this. Uh, they have not been truthful uh, about this and deny providing weapons to Russia for use in Ukraine. Uh, meanwhile, according to these new reports, Iran is considering selling still more uh, destructive weapons to support an invasion they claim to oppose. Now, what we're, we're doing here, we'll continue to vigorously enforce U.S. San sanctions on both uh, the Russian and Iranian arm trade. That's what we'll, we'll do from here, uh, make it harder for Iran to sell these weapons to Russia, and we'll stand with our partners throughout the region against that Iranian threat. And then over the weekend, VOA Persian got some worrying reports from human rights activists in Tehran who said that authorities at Evan Prison shot at prisoners who were trying to escape the fire. Does this change anything about the White House's view on these escalating protests in Iran, and what might be the consequences of, of actions like that? So look, we the president. You heard from the president uh, directly um, just just this past weekend when he talked about um, uh, how gravely concerned he is about the intensifying uh, violent crackdown on peaceful protesters, on on brave the brave women uh, in in Iran and their allies. Uh, and he talked about uh, you know how uh, he he. Um, you know, he, he, he's proud of how much they're fighting for their equal rights, for their basic rights. That's what we're seeing. 
uh, from from the Iranian civil civilians. The Iranian government has now killed, as you all know, more than 200 uh, pro people in its crackdown, according to credible reports by human rights organizations. And we condemn. We condemn the Iran authorities uh, and that that have arrested and fired uh, at peaceful protesters, the targeted arrest of journalists, human rights activists, teachers, and cultural figures, and the continued disruption of the internet inside Iran. You have heard from us the sanctions that we have put forth through the, uh, the the uh, the Treasury Department, and uh, we will we will have more to share uh, when we do when we can. Amid all of this, is the JCPOA still a priority? How is how is the administration keeping it top of mind? So. My colleague at the State Department spoke to this last week, and I'll just reiterate what he laid out, which is the door for diplomacy will always remain open. But as of now, we don't see a deal coming together anytime soon. Meanwhile, regardless of the nuclear talks, uh, we will continue to confront Iran's behavior in the region, protect our, protecting, uh, protect our troops, uh, including with military forces when necessary, and support the brave Iranian people who are demanding for their basic rights. They so are demanding for their basic rights and dignity, which this regime has long denied them. So the United States stands with Iranian women and all the citizens of Iran who are inspiring the world. You heard the president say this himself just a couple of days ago with their bravery and will continue to take action to impose cost on those who commit violence against peaceful protesters or otherwise seek to suppress their rights. Again, we don't see a deal coming together anytime soon to answer the question in the back. All right, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.